Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, for us, it's Wednesday uh, as far as our game prep. And um, so um, we're doing a lot of things, third down, red zone, some of the situational things today. We had a good uh, bye week last week. Uh, we're able to practice a handful of times, uh, worked a lot with our younger players, and then reconvened on Sunday and started going with Oklahoma State. And we know we've got a big task ahead um, playing in Stillwater. And um, Got to play really well. We got to have another good day of preparation and, and get ready for Friday night. What stood out to you the most about the work you did in the off week? Um, just probably more uh, with those developmental freshmen and redshirt freshmen, I and mean, that's the group that we always focus on every bye week is to try to make sure that we get the the younger guys just good on good. K State versus K State um, went pads three days with those guys and just and just practiced and then you know because whether or not their future is now or future is in another year, we have to continue to evaluate. Anything to be taken from last year's Oklahoma State game, or is that just kind of maybe an outlier? Um, well, it was a big win for sure, uh, and we played well, but. Uh, you know, two totally different teams in my mind. Uh, we, you know, a lot of things went right for us uh, last year and, and made some plays. And, um, you know, I, but I don't take a lot from it. I don't, we don't look at the film and say, boy, we're going to get this or that because of, you know, just two totally different teams. I was doing some math before I came over, which is scary. Yeah. Um, and I discovered you've had one big run in the last three games. If you can, tamp down those explosive plays you're only giving up 1.3 yards per carry what is what is that barrier like um well you know we, we have to continue to be uh, really good in the run um you know it, it hurts being down daniel green in, in the run game for us for sure uh you know we've, we've got other guys that are stepping up but uh you know every week's probably a different challenge in what we're going to face running the football oklahoma state presents a lot of challenges. Um, they've, you know, when we've gone down there, they we have not been able to 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 stop them from running the football. Winning the line of scrimmage um, in Stillwater's been uh, uh, difficult, and that's the the task at hand. We've got to be uh, good on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Coach saw Asa wasn't on the depth chart this week. What's his status? Yeah, he got hurt in uh, uh, the open week, and so we'll probably redshirt him. And Oklahoma State, <clears throat> they've played a lot of quarterbacks this season. It sounds like they're going to start Alan Bowman this game, see mm -hmm. what happens from there. Just when you're watching a team that has that much, I guess, change at quarterback, yep. how does that change your evaluation and how you prepare for him? Well, you got to look at, at all the guys that have played. But, you know, the most recent one was the Iowa State game where Bowman played uh, the entirety of that game. And, and I thought they did some really, really good things offensively. So that would be the anticipation. Um, and then we've got to adapt and adjust if it's somebody else. But I would anticipate Bowman playing. Coach, how much would a bye week assist them with uh... – Moving into the three three five, and you've gone through that a couple years ago. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how it assists them. I don't know what their what their plans are and stuff. But the bye week is is typically the same for everybody. You try to get your younger players more repetition. You try to fix some of of the issues that that your team has. I don't know what their what their issues are. Uh, I know what our issues are, and that's what we tried to focus on is try to get better at some of our things. So I I, I don't have an opinion on what they would have done. Did you do anything differently with VJ Payne and, and Kobe Savage? I think it on the depth chart list them in different safety spots. Yeah, that was before UCF. Yeah, yeah so I mean, so reason. no, we we did that before UCF. Uh, so we switched their positions before UCF, um, and so now they've had another two weeks to get acclimated. You, you say that. Klanerman does a really good job of, of making guys versatile and having to play different spots in practice, spring ball, fall camp. So it was something that we thought would help our team, but it wasn't like a wholesale change, like somebody moving from safety to linebacker or linebacker to D-line. Um, we have so many interchangeable guys in the secondary. John Pastore's on the depth chart now. Is he someone that you envision being in the rotation at some point? Yeah, if he continues to, to improve and, and he was you know banged up for a good 
chunk of camp and early on in the season. So he's working his way back, uh, but uh, gives us another viable candidate at tackle for sure. And how do you feel about your vertical passing game? I know you guys are still trying to unlock yeah. that a little bit. Still trying to continue to improve on it, without a doubt. We've been able to to be efficient offensively. I mean, we're, we're moving the ball and gaining a lot of yards and, and points and um, pleased with where we're at offensively. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess when you look at it from the flip side, we're giving up more explosive plays on defense, which we've got to control. You'd, you'd hope you'd get a few more on offense. That's probably where it's more glaring is the fact that the amount we've given up on defense compared to what we've gotten on offense. Um, and so, you know, we got to fix the issues we have on defense, but on offense, continue to find ways to push the ball downfield for sure. Do you look back at Bowman's time at, at, at Tech at all? No, it was a long time, a long time ago. So, um, yeah, he's one of those guys who's played a lot of football. I, I know that. You know, uh, when you have that much experience, I mean, look at Will. I just, it just playing that much, practicing that much. Um, there's not a lot of pictures that fool you, uh, and I don't see this kid being fooled by any pictures. And so, you know, but we'll we'll look at how he's done within the scheme that he's in at Oklahoma State. Is the plan at at middle linebacker still have? Jake kind of in there a little bit to help out or what what's um happening? Jake can play all three uh so he'll fill in a lot uh potentially at all spots uh, I'm excited about Bo Palmer because Bo continues to get better and continues to get healthier from his injury last season uh that uh, the one the one area that that you hope we don't have to use Jake is as the mic backer because of where Bo's at um but uh um, he definitely could play all three. I'd see him more at Sam and Will. How valuable is a bye week for someone like Oscar Romain, who is still yeah. in the process of learning and development? Yeah, I think it's really valuable for guys like he and you know anybody that's you know, even um, somebody like Treshawn Ward that you know missed some time um, and missed a game is back. Uh, just getting those guys more and more uh, acclimated to the offense, to the defense. Will Lee, uh, getting him more acclimated uh, to what we're doing. Trey Spivey, guys that that you know are close or are helping us, but they've only been in our program for a short period of time. Aside from the, the usual desire to win, is there anything extra for for you to get a win this week? Considering that that you haven't won in Stillwater, yeah, uh, I, I don't lose any sleep over it. So we just got to play good football uh, Chris how has um, Chris Tennant responded after missing a few kicks? you know I thought he had a really good week um, last week uh, exceptional week I was wondering how he would bounce back um, and uh, I, I've seen a different side of him from a mentality standpoint that is encouraging that I thought he was struggled last year getting over some of his his difficult days uh, and you know, have not uh, seen that thus far uh, in the last week, week and a half. And so I'm excited about getting Chris out there and letting him bang him because uh, he's got great leg strength, great talent, and he seems to not be bothered, which is good. And uh, you've only been there twice, but is there anything that sticks out to you about the stadium down there in Stillwater that makes it a difficult place to play? Um, it's just winning on the road in general. We haven't played our best football down there, uh, but you can correlate that to we've not won the line of scrimmage. You know, um, if you don't win the line of scrimmage, either side of the ball, and and they're able to stop our rush, and we're able to, uh, and they're able to rush the football. Whether you're playing in, in the street parking lot or at home or away, it just comes down to a mentality of of being able to. Um, be physical and win the line of scrimmage. You know, I, it's a, that's why it's, it's so hard to say, boy, do you, you know, do you feel like you're don't play as well at home, don't play well uh, on the road, tough environments and stuff. You know, in the Big Twelve, it's hard. It's hard to win on the road for sure. Um, and the the environment, something that you know, we got to work the noise a bunch because it's it's extremely loud down there. But you still got to be able to execute, and that's what it comes down to us is. Whether we're home or away, um, if we don't execute at a high level, we're, we're not going to be very successful on either side of the ball. Coach, what's impressing you the most about Austin Moore right now? Um, the leader that he's become 
you know, he's always been a quiet leader. Uh, this year, he's become that vocal leader. When I say this year, from from the winter to the spring to the summer to now the fall, and he's had to amp it up with Daniel Green out. Uh, and when he speaks, uh, everybody listens because he speaks volumes. And um, you know, you just watch him practice. You watch him prepare. Uh, it, there's a reason why he's one of the best linebackers in, in the Big 12. Uh, he he takes care of his body. Uh, he he watches film. He helps the young guys. He encourages the older guys that that are maybe struggling. Um, he's just you know he's the the ultimate captain and the ultimate warrior uh, for our guys because you know it hasn't been easy for Austin. He's been banged up during his time too. But uh, boy, he he comes to play every day. Going back to what you were talking about earlier, the road warrior mentality, it seems like this team is a tough team. It seems yep. like this team is a confident team. How might that bode – uh, that mentality of going on the road, being road warriors. Yeah, hopefully experience. You know, uh, a lot of guys were on the road for us last year that had success. And, and granted, we didn't have success the first time uh, that we were on the road. And hopefully we learned from that. Um, and uh, whether it was routine, whether it was uh, environment, whether it was um, a, a combination of things, when you don't have success, you, you, you need to learn from it. And uh uh, I, I feel like we've got the right leaders involved uh, with our team and, you know, talk about player ownership to, to make sure that uh, our guys are ready. Now, are we going to be good enough? Uh, we'll find out uh, on Friday night. How much did the bye week benefit Keegan Johnson? I hope it benefited uh, him. I hope it benefited RJ. They've practiced this week. Um, so that that's encouraging. Um, everybody that played in the UCF game, um, with the exception of Asa, who was on special teams, a, a couple of snaps, all those guys should be available. So you hope, you know, you know, we gave them a couple days off, but we had to practice on Sunday, which is not a typical practice day. So they probably had one less off day. Um, but uh, we were smart with them in, in the middle of last week when we were working some of our young guy stuff. So hopefully they're all fresh. Uh, with uh, you talked about the new guys, the developmental guys, but what about a guy like Christian Duffy? Who, how helpful yeah. was the extra week? That was that offense? was big for Duff. Uh, more than anything, to get his legs underneath him. You know, he he needed to practice, and he practiced uh, every day. There's not anybody that we just said, "Hey, you're not practicing." Uh, for whatever reason, everybody practiced um, all last week with the, on the days we did practice. But getting Duff out there and and having him go against Mott and Duke and and Stuffelbean <clears throat> and Nate, you know, having him go against those guys, whether it was in a team period, a a one on one period, uh, just to continue to get him more football reps. He, he's had a lot. Uh, in his time, but he hadn't had any, you know, since spring ball. So I think it uh, really benefited him to get his feet back underneath him. And speaking of the offensive line, was the UCF game the best in terms of getting to the second level and playing in physical nature? Yeah, I, I thought uh, we played really well against uh, UCF, and uh, I thought. DJ Giddens ran really well against UCF. It's and and it's a combination of things. We were able to throw the ball a little bit. So when you have balance, uh, which was what we did, it makes it uh, not easier, but makes it more. You should be able to be more efficient rushing the football when you have balance that you can throw. Uh, your running back seeing and hitting the holes, and guys are communicating up front well. Um, that's that's what we. Uh, come to expect, and and the challenge is, uh, you know, a little bit different style of defense this week. That, um, um, you know, what a, what adjustments we have to make as well, because I'm sure they're going to make adjustments just like we've made adjustments. Well, I, ball more is is a topic of compared to the first through. Three weeks, yes. Compared to the fourth week, I don't know if we want to give it to him 40 times a game. You know, when you talk about carries and and receptions, we want to make sure he can last for the whole season. Uh, but without a doubt, um, he proved to us that he can be that bell cow that can carry it. Now, I don't know if that's 20 carries, if that's 18 carries and six catches. I, I'm not sure how the game will play out. But um, you know, when if 
if we could book and have 80 plays every game, yeah, we'd get him a lot of carries. But, you know, every game is going to be a little bit different. 